Twitter is our first uh, our first network uh, that we want to talk about. Um, a lot of a lot of buzz around Twitter. It's it's a big uh, it's a very big uh, network. Not not nearly as big as Facebook, but uh, 20 million, 30 million people using Twitter. Um, it's a way to send short uh, short text messages to your followers. It's sort of a or sort of a creepy term in a way, your, your followers, but um, what you'll find across all these networks is they have this similar paradigm of friends or followers or colleagues. Uh, they're all the same thing. They're, they're people, they're, they're, they're a person that you've connected with on in that particular channel, and depending on their focus, they, they're going to use a different terminology. So, so it's a way to send short updates, 140, 140 characters or less. Um, it's all you can send out in a tweet. Uh, there's all sorts of fun, uh, with Twitter, there's all sorts of fun things about tweets are what you send out. Your tweets are the people that follow you and um, all sorts of uh, funny funny things. Conan O'Brien does some funny stuff about uh, Twitter if you want to find some clips on YouTube. Um, but a uh, lot, lot of funny terminology around around Twitter. 100, 140 characters was, was uh, picked because of its uh, text message. Uh, originally it was really used a lot by people with mobile devices, and so the limit there is 160 characters. By limiting Twitter to 140, they left some room for metadata about who's doing this and uh, what time it happened and, and that sort of thing. So very short, uh, quick updates. This is my, I'm logged in here to my, to my Twitter account on Twitter.com, um, and these are people that I've chosen to follow. Um, and their updates are, are coming into the uh, onto my page here. Um, you have people from the college, web design geeks, um, people I've worked with, a guy up in, in Montreal I, I met at a conference that speaks in French. Uh, I don't get a whole lot out of his uh, <laughs> <laughs> out of his tweets, but uh, um, uh, but uh, every once in a while he will, will post in English. Uh, you know, a couple. I think a couple. Yeah, so showing here NPR, I subscribe to their stuff. So each day they send out a tweet about who's going to be on the exchange today. Um, PSNH uh, sort of got going to be sort of jumping around a little bit with this uh, within each of these sections. But PSNH did a great job using Twitter uh, during the ice storm last year. Um, they, you know, they, they, I think they won some awards for their communications efforts around that. When you think of all these tools, back up for one second. Um, the hard part is getting your hand around all the different ways it can be used. So if you think of uh, the simplest example maybe is a piece of mail, right? Uh, we all know what a piece of mail is. We, we, we get something, we put our ad address on it, stamp, return address, we put it in the mail. That That's a tool. So that tool can be used, how can that tool be used? It can be used to communicate with your employees, right? You can mail them information, letters, newsletters, open enrollment information. Um, Big slips. <laughs> Um, you, could, you could use the mail as a tool to uh, talk to your suppliers, uh, people who are giving you services that you want to, uh, you want to, uh, you know, that you want to talk to, you want to tell them what's going on with your business. You can use mail to talk to your customers, right? Sort of three, three major, group, major groups, your customers, your suppliers, your employees. All these tools can be used in different ways for those three main audiences. We're not going to be able to talk about each of those, but all your businesses are a little bit different. We have, we have, uh, we have retail here. We have industrial manufacturing and, and, and equipment in the room. Real estate, auto sales, insurance, nonprofits. Um, each of you are going to be able to use these tools in a different manner. Uh, and the best, what's going to be good for for Cindy at the at the Colonial may not be good for Ellie at Logo Pack. So keep that in mind as we go through all these. We're going to try to hit some of the ways that, that we've been thinking about how businesses use it. Um, but you can use it in many different, all these things in many different ways. Mike, yeah. you said these are people you chose to follow. Yep. When you set up an account, is it like LinkedIn? Can you search, you know, like if I don't know you're out there mm -hmm. and I want to follow you or not, can you go out and search for yeah. things? Yeah, the, all, these, all these networks, you know, they, they, the, the network effect, right? That's what we call it, the technology field. The, fir the first fax machine was pretty useless, right? It wasn't until that second fax machine came around. That thing's got interesting. Um, the more the more fax machines out there, the better faxing is, and so um, all these things make it pretty easy to find people. You can, um, particularly if you use an online service for your email, you can tell it to scan your your Yahoo account or your Gmail account, and it will um, find people who are who are on there. Um, you can do some searching. Um, do you 
see what just happened, by the way, as up there. Yeah. He's got a, he's got a computer tool. Yeah. yeah. I'll show this. Is, this is a, a, a tool I'll show, uh, try to show at the end. I got this up today or, uh, uh, on purpose. It wasn't, wasn't just uh, laziness, but this is a, a tool that is monitoring a bunch of different networks for me. And it's getting updated live as, as we speak. So uh, Kevin Scully, another, another proud of guy, um, updated his LinkedIn profile this morning during, during our presentation. And it kind of popped up here um, for, for, uh, for me to know. Mike, on the previous slide. Yep. What I'm taking away from this is that you have to be engaged, you have to be yourself, you're sincere, so you can't delegate stuff very well. So you have to look at this side. So I'm looking at that side, you scroll down on it. You got NPR saying good morning. Mm -hmm. right? Well, that's, to me, that's First junk one. garbage. You know? yeah. and it's so so mm -hmm. when you spend, basically, you scroll down, you're looking for a face that you recognize, or a headline, or a word that makes you bother to dig deeper. Yeah, I mean, discard a game. Is that what you see? I mean, how you because well, so the, part of the power is it is opt-in. So if that's that's powerful to you as business owners, and organizational leaders, uh, the people that are following you here chose to follow you. So you can you know you can use the rules that Jeff talked about. Maybe maybe a good morning post isn't isn't the best uh, use of the time. But if, if I get fed up with that, I can just unfollow. Show them that. Show them that. First of all, Heather, you had asked Katie, how do you find? There are topics on the right that you can, that you, that, well, you can find people on the right, or you can find topics. You can type them. That's me, that's my personal, <laughs> not the company. So here's where he complains about the Patriots. So. He's <laughs> <laughs> not used to call the right? So, so there's, there's many ways to find. Uh, find insurance. Find different things. Um, this is the accounts. Uh, I'll show. I'll show some of that to the okay. tools. Um, but then you can so, also. You can also, to your point, you can get if, if, you're, if you follow somebody, you post good morning too often. Gone. You don't have to, you just, if you look, go over to the right of one of those players, there's a little thing here, you can, where is it over there? I haven't done it in a while, but you can get rid of it and you can not go to the car. It might be in followers. I've got a car here and I, uh, right there. Block. Block, unfollow, reporter for spam. Hmm. It's usually Yes. Twitter to those people. If they get enough people complaining about spam, they'll, they'll block her from using it. How many accounts can you actually set up for this one? Do a personal one? Do you have a business one? Do you have multiple ones? Yeah, that's, the, that's one of the good things about Twitter versus Facebook. Is that Twitter lets you have some multiple things, and if people are really pro prolific, some of you may, uh, the hospital folks are here. Uh, uh, they may want a Twitter account that is mainly um, customer service oriented or, or uh, events happening in the hospital. They may also want a Twitter account that's emergencies, um, community health sorts of things. So you can set up multiple accounts then people can choose to which one they subscribe. So um, again, back to PSNA with their ice storm alerts, they were posting very regularly where, where crews were, what they were they working on. Um, uh, where they thought they might get to, and that became a valuable piece of their, their communication uh, toolbox to, to work through that, that crisis. So if I'm thinking locally, I'm thinking of an organization like the hospital H1N1 it, updates. Right, uh, could use use this. Think about it, well, it's almost as your, your private radio station or, or your way to broadcast. You, can have multiple, you can't have multiple accounts within this. Um, you, can, you can use the username to, to call it, uh, you know, then Rust tax updates or General, uh, general finance stuff that's uh, of, of interest. Um, you, you can't have multiple accounts. This. The other, the other nice thing you know, um, it, with Twitter is it's, it's a more of a public medium. Uh, that's why I think a lot of companies, Twitter is very good. Both Facebook and Twitter are good for companies. Twitter is particularly good. Why the marketers are all excited about Twitter is it's public. Your, your tweets, generally speaking, you, know, you can have private tweets. You can set up your account to be a protected account. But generally speaking. 
I would think 99% of people on Twitter are, are sort of shouting to the world, uh, shouting to their followers whenever they, um, whenever they post. So it, it makes it great for marketers, people doing research, to be able to search the, the Twitter sphere, is the, is the term, is the, the crazy term they use to talk about the whole world that's Twitter. Where these yeah. even allows you to send a virtual cheeseburger yeah. to folks. <laughs> you gift them with a little icon. No, a bigger issue, the bigger issue on Facebook, uh, this uh, this concept of friending, unfriending, um, on. Because on, uh, on on LinkedIn, because it's or, sorry on, on Twitter, because it's it's me choosing to follow Jeff. It's not Jeff. It's sort of a I'm in control of that relationship. So if I if I block Jeff, he's not going to get a note that says Mike's not following you anymore. Maybe if he's really monitoring the fact that oh I had oh, this morning I had 86 followers, I only have 85 now. I must have yeah. I, uh, you could I guess you could figure it out, but there's no last that. Uh, Mike's no longer following each other. You have a question? Yeah, I'm talking about the okay. reverse. Um, I'm sorry. sorry. Oh, I just want to come yeah. I'm talking about the reverse. It's not so much that I don't want to follow Jeff anymore. It's that Jeff doesn't want to follow him anymore. Um, Jeff doesn't want you to follow him. Um, he could he would, he could block the updates that, that he hears from you. Um, well, would I know that? No. Okay. I'm just curious, because you were talking about SMH. Um, yeah. Their audience. I wasn't. I didn't live up here at the time. And what I hear, like cell phone towers were down, so you couldn't really yeah. check that. You can't check your computer. I mean, you know, you don't I have service. Your crack barrier. Not everybody lost the power. So you could just spread so the word by now. Yeah. Okay. So it's just for people that didn't lose their power, and they yeah. could go around saying, "Well, no, I saw the, the I saw online that they were on your roof yeah. you know, today." Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So. That was a couple days ago. They haven't posted it today, so even little things. So yeah, there are some. If you're out of power, you can't check your, your computer's not on. But again, the power of Twitter. It is a mobile device. Um, even if you're, even if in uh, Dublin there's no power, maybe you're you're in Keene, you can use your phone to check the PMS. Can't you download updates to your iPhone? Your crack there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need power. Right. Well, it's, it's, I think they're saying it's, it, 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 I think there are some areas where cell phone coverage is out because the towers are out in the south. Yeah. Assuming you're uh, not getting it on your handheld device, yep. how often do you get it on your Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Depends on, depends on. You have it up all day? <laughs> some people do. That's, I mean, there, there are ads. That would be quite a stretch. Um, <laughs> yeah. There are, um, it could be. Yeah. I mean, the people who use TweetDeck are, are probably addicts. Sort of things there. Um, I, I don't, I will, uh, I, you know, again, when you need to get work done, um, you, you need to get work done and you turn this sort of stuff off. But it sort of gives it an easy way to, to this particular tool gives you an easy way to look at, and I'm seeing LinkedIn updates here, uh, Facebook updates, um, direct messages to me. Um, but they are, in, in terms of business use, Remember, people are online. The, 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 the ratio of people spend as much time online and watching TV now, maybe more. So sometimes your tweet may not get seen or your Facebook posting may not be seen until that night or the next day. But people are going to check those things. I think that made that the difference. A great point that I see. And I think in the past that they can do it on their time yep. mm -hmm. as opposed to seeing TV at the yeah, and there is, I mean, with, with these things, there's a ephemeral nature to them, that, that it is a point in time. You may post, someone may not see it. You can't necessarily count that there are going to see this. So, you know, one of the gotchas, um, one of the gotchas, you know, this is not part of the mission critical. I would encourage the hospital to build their whole communication plan around Twitter. But having it to be a part of part of their, their communication plan might be good. Um, there are there are aspects where the network can get overloaded. Um, Twitter's got a lot better with that, uh, but early on, meaning eight months ago, um, 
their network was having trouble keeping up with its popularity, and, and there was this, what was it, the Failwell, the Failwell picture group? Uh, I mean, uh, okay. um, so they have a, they had a, a famous error message called the fail whale, which is this whale being carried by little little birdies um, <laughs> that, that shows up the networks down. Um, yeah. So that sort of points out the fact that when you your lawyers send out a message on Twitter or something mm -hmm. like that to business, you want to keep in mind that you don't know how long it's going to be before the person sees it. So it needs to be of value regardless if you know, they see it right there or two days from now. Okay. Well, or in the PSNH case, Barry, there, you know, they knew they had some, they had a bunch of people really interested in watching this <coughs> another way. Worse, what they were sending out were very timely updates. This is when we'll be getting to a group of key. You know, this is what we're so so. They weren't getting to everybody that way, but they certainly had a, a group of followers for whom that was that was important. And so it was timely. It didn't have to. It didn't matter. Me. Uh, so here's here's uh, Jeff's company, um, their Twitter page. I uh, noticed, you know, Twitter these things just a little monitors a little squished with the yeah. projector, uh, so someone's getting you know, getting squashed here. But um, so you can brand it a little bit. Twitter gives you tools to easily say, you know, use this color red in the background, uh, use this use this image. Um, put uh, you can you can sort of put a biography about you. Um, if you are going to have your business on there, I encourage you to think a little bit about that. You can take long URLs. Remember the 140 character limit? There are several services. I use Tiny URL. You take a long, uh, tinyurl.com, take a long URL string, and I wanted to show, what was that one? That was, it says Nike won't dump Tiger, but there are risks for brand rely on a spokesperson. I guess Jared from Subway is getting really fat. Uh, and so they're dealing with that now. So I found out on a brand new newsletter, and I basically said, ah, you know, and obviously Tiger's in the news now. Um, this is long URL, and you put it in tiny URL, it shortens it so you, can, so you can fit it within your 140 character limit. It's still, uh, there's a bunch of them that are like that. I have a question about that. Do the search engines not follow tiny There's been discussions regarding that whether how much uh, how much it does in terms of the search engine visibility in terms of SEO rankings, and some research say that it does impact them, and some research say that they do not. So I've seen kind of what what the fact is, and I've been so many articles that have been covered now. So they, they may not the search, they, they may not follow the URL. There are some, there are some getting getting eager than than you want to be. Um, there are people that are concerned that these URLs short shorting search services could be used to sort of hide what the actual destination is. You know, when I click a link to uh, Mark and Homage, I know I'm going to Mark and Homage because it's Mark, sorry, you know, Wrong. my old employee, Logo Pack. Um, <laughs> uh, I know I'm going to Logo Pack because it's logopack.com. That cost click, you a dollar. <laughs> when I click a tiny URL, um, I don't know where I'm going. So there, I don't think you need to worry about it. Um, but the, the geeks, you know, so, so Google may not crawl because they don't know what exactly is going but it does help your search engine optimization because if we search for communicators group, we would probably find this page. We would find Jeff's link to his real link to his company here. We get to find out what he does um, there. So it does help. It does help search engine. And, and by design, I do this. I actually write this one, although it's our company one. So sometimes our creative director will come in and, and post things. But by design, we do this with a. Um, uh, with a human tone to it. We're a small company, 15 people, whatever, but that bottom one was a Thanksgiving thing, and she wrote, patients wrote, thankful for the support, trust, the terrific clients, and the chance to work with you. So it says, it shows the human side of you. You get this academic side and this human side. It makes your own employees feel better about you, and it makes you feel, it, it's a good way to communicate that you really do care, that kind of thing. And a, and a way to, to brag your expertise, right? So. Uh, Jeff will update this when he finds something absolutely very interesting about marketing and communication. If you're following him, you're going to learn stuff, increases your Wait, level of trust. Clients. This is Gina Job at CNS. She, she, this is my reply to her. This app says to her, like we're on, we're on my profile, but this is my reply to her for a thing that CNS had done, showing the heart that the company has. And in fact, I can sort of talk to her. She'll, she sees that. So, um, 
So each of those, yeah. Yeah, each of those things, that's the full content of that particular tweet. That's it. It's that easy. And um, like you said, store clients, whatever, share your current activities. But in a sense, if I'm if I'm looking at this from the outside, that page doesn't have value unless you have a whole lot of content. Yep, you better do it a lot. Yeah, because it's just got the top three entries. It's dead as a doornail. I mean, it looks stale yeah. and old and so on. Yeah, you got to. So gotta it sounds like you got to. Okay. You got to. You jump in. You got to jump. You got to jump in. You got to commit. Well, I think Facebook's probably a little bit more lenient to occasional stuff once you get it set up. Twitter is meant to tweet. You're supposed to you know, chattery. It's, it's, it's real so chattery. you've got the back and forth between LinkedIn and Twitter, and so that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. You do it once and it hits both. Yeah. That's, I, I would say a minimum, tweet every other day once. Every other day once. Now, there are some people, like, <laughs> like yeah. NHBR would drive you crazy, by the way. I see they keep coming up there. I'd be digging on it. Yeah. For me. Um, frankly, Gina Goff, I'm picking her, she does it too much for me. Yeah, but you, but you, would, you, would, you would probably subscribe to Bill Belichick. Everyone, I'm interested in news and facts. I get what I want. Yeah. You, know? so, um, you had a business tip section. Yeah, yeah, we're going to. Maybe, get, maybe we'll get through Facebook um, by the end. But, you know, business tips, ways to, you know, so I think there's. Interesting ways, you know, just think about your business. Colonial could use it to, uh, to tweet about uh, upcoming shows. Um, you know, uh, insurance company, Heather, uh, you know, storm, big storm coming in tonight. Read our, read our uh, top 10 tips for driving in the, in the snow. Um, and, and a link back to your website. Um, there's lots of ways uh, to use that. Here's um, one. So short uh, Here's one. Uh, uh, for a restaurant, um, reservations are looking thin tonight. First 10 people who, who retweet get get a free appetizer. You know, you can all of a sudden throw in one of those for the very timely nature of it. A lot of people get these on their mobile phones. I mean, you can throw in. Uh, they better be happy surprises for your for your followers. But if Margaritas sent me that, everyone, I might go. Yeah, let's go. Free Margarita at 11:30. I think that is. <laughs> Yeah, so, so coupons, uh, specials, things like that you could use Twitter for. Um, you could have a protected Twitter feed and only allow your employees to subscribe to it um, as a way of communicating to, to employees against severe weather sorts of things. Um, office is closed today. Um, uh, and then uh, special sorts of announcements, and, and then I mentioned the services and the school schoolers is some of the things we thought. Um, we talked a little bit about the, the third-party applications. I'll try to try to come back around to that at the end. Or maybe let me just show you some quick stuff here. We're going to run out. So TweetDeck, again, it's a bit of a, a bear uh, of a, an application, a little more advanced. One of, one of the cool things it will do, and I'll show you a similar version, similar features. Is TweetDeck only for Apple? No, TweetDeck is uh, a... Uh, Flash bag, flash based uh, application, so it'll really work on across platforms. Great. Uh, this is this one, I believe, is uh, Mac based only. This is a little one called I just did. It's a little one called Tweety. Um, so, so one of the things you can do with Tweety is um, have some saved searches. So, I search for Honda. Uh, this is going to we'll search the Twitter sphere for anything about Honda. Um, and so you get a, you know, in this case you get, you know, obviously a huge international brand. Um, I, I tried some, some searching for some of the folks um, around here. Uh, you know, we're a small community. They didn't necessarily find uh, a lot there, but uh, again, you may have, you may have reasons to sh save a, a search um, and use it as a, use it as a moderate tool. I'm involved heavily with the uh, YMCA of North Dakota. Uh, so I have a safe search here. If anyone tweets about Camp Dakota, it will show up here, and uh, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be happy to see their uh, some uh, parent or child tweeting about the good good times they had. Not not bad. So I think Heather, I think you were asking how do I find good people to follow. So what are you interested in? Search that way. But it works the other way around. This is maybe one of the sort of cheaper do-it-yourself reputation monitoring. Search, save a search for Clark Mortensen, insurance yeah. financial services, or insurance key, to just see, because you want to yeah. some of the capital yeah. customers, I don't know. <laughs> you know, so anything that comes up, you 
want to be able to respond to that knowledge. You better keep moving. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is, there, is there an extra credit on this one? Just, I mean, Twitter, I think, uh, of all the networks, I think Twitter is probably the fastest evolving right now. Um, so, what, you know, what really started as, as a way for a small group of people to keep in touch with their mobile phones is changing rapidly. Uh, they just introduced a service called Lists, which allows you to create sort of sub lists of people. So uh, if Jeff had a bunch of marketing people that he followed that he thought were the best people, he could create a list of this. And that's another way of him providing value to you as potential customers. You know, here's a whole bunch of people I think you should follow. It changed, I mean, that happened, I don't know, two weeks ago, not even two weeks ago. Like Facebook, uh, Google introduced new capabilities last night uh, that when you upload a video, it's going to translate your your speech to text, so it can be indexed, um, and so video becomes a much bigger play in your search engine optimization. Does that happen on my website too now? Uh, if, if it's hosted on Google, um, if, if your video is hosted on Google, uh, I think it, I think it's related there. Um, now the thing about the Twitter versus Facebook mm -hmm. is that. You can't have your own page that says, hey, my business is located on right. Micro Street. Right. Come check us out. Or like, no, just standard right. information right. that people yeah. could check. Out. Like, so besides just your updates, unless your business has a million updates, mm -hmm. I don't know how. We've gone back and forth yeah. by Google's for yeah. this. Um, that's why we opted against Twitter at yeah. this point, because we don't have something to say every day. Right. I think, yeah, you know, I, I think it's a good point. It's good to have that discussion around it. I think Facebook is. Facebook is very appropriate for some businesses. Twitter is very appropriate for some businesses. They're both appropriate for some. Um, yeah, I think Twitter. There's, I think there's a trend towards some individual, uh, in business in general, individual expertise. And if, if you had, uh, I worked at, at uh, Hanover Insurance for a while, you know, down in, down in Worcester. If you had a leading risk management person that you wanted as a company, you wanted to uh, promote that person as an expert in the field. Uh, you might let that person have a Twitter, but there's no company Twitter. It's uh, not meant to be your your profile. It's meant to yeah. be your communication device, two-way communication. But what if I followed you guys, and I'm like, huh, I would really like to talk to them in person. Is there a way that I could see? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, Cross-link them oh, all. Okay. Yeah. That's a link right to our to communication. A lot of people will use their back, the background yeah. image uh, to sort of yeah, this face is the background. The way this the projector's doing it cuts it off, but you can contact it over there. That's just a static JPEG, it won't be linkable, but you know, it, it says, it gives a brief description. Okay, real quick. One Twitter, one more yeah, Twitter. Twitter have a way to share between some of my clients, like Facebook. Is that just a different There's maybe some third party tools that would do that, I feel like. Whereas Facebook, you can see probably. Right. Like, right. And, um, Twitter. No, it's Twitter. much more of a communication bit. Well, the other way to do it, I mean, the way to do it is also, I mean, you click on your follow, on right. who you happen to be following, and then see who they're following, and see yeah. if there's anything of interest. Try it for a couple of days. If it bores you, they're gone. Right. Okay. Uh, measurement, Michael? Yeah. Uh, Twitter, you know, you can me measure Twitter by um, mentions, uh, replies, that, you know, people will, will reach retweets. If, if something you, you wrote was really good, they'll retweet it. You could, um, you know, I think for, for, for most of us in this room, just being up there is more important than <laughs> at this point worrying about measuring it. Um, you could uh, you could set up links that you could track to your website if, you, if you're more advanced with your web analytics skills, um, capabilities. Um, there, there are ways to measure that. Uh, I think for, 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 this is the big one, how many people are following you? That, that's a measure of how, how much you're respected, how much credibility you have about your particular issue. And also response to specials, try it. Mm -hmm. see, see if anybody comes in for that free advertising. Mm -hmm. If they don't, try something different. Iterate. Uh, we were told that Uma idea there already. Yeah. This is how simple it is to sign up for oh, Twitter. Sorry, going back for yeah. here. Okay, we're very talking about Uma. What's your name? What do you want for a username, password, your email address? Um, There's going to be a security thing right yeah. here, one of those things you can barely read. Yeah. And then you're in. So I sign up is basically the same for business mm -hmm. Yeah, with Twitter there's no real, there's no, there's no real, there's no entity of a business on Twitter. There's just accounts. And you can use the same email address for multiple, which you cannot do on Facebook. Or 
with my personal uses of my same email address and it's communication. Okay? Facebook. Uh, the big uh, great, great little piece of humor uh, the guy I was, was talking to uh, I said, I, I know what Facebook is. It's that application that makes computer screens go blank when a parent comes into the room. <laughs> um, uh, Facebook, uh, the biggest, uh, you know, biggest social network out. Well, uh, there's, there's one in China that's bigger, but uh, certainly from a, from a U.S. perspective, uh, 350 million users on Facebook. Um, you know, my, 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 I come to my geekiness naturally. My dad, my dad is in computers early, but he's a you know 71 year old retired guy in Phoenix and on Facebook playing Scrabble with his old buddies and, and, uh, and folks um, getting used by by a lot of people. I think um, today we're really talking, we're trying to talk about business, and there's, there's a huge there's a huge with Facebook. I think Cindy was talking a little bit about the break. Um, it's one of the places where our business and personal sort of are going to mash the most of, of all these probably. Um, we're going to try to show you a couple things about setting up a page for your business. That's one way to sort of keep your keep the things that are, are person, uh, our business in one area and the things that are personal in another. You can have a page. You can have a page for your business and not be a friend of anybody um, if you choose to. Um, you can choose to only friend real friends. You can choose to friend anybody that tries to friend you. Um, you need to do a little bit of a little bit of thinking about uh, what's comfortable for you. Um, I would I would urge people to be probably a little more um, conservative about who they who they friend and, and so forth. I think uh, the, the network as a as a person as as you at home. It's probably going to be more valuable to you if you uh, can really post uh, what you want to post um, to Facebook. You're going to you're going to be able to get that support from the network uh, that, that you want um, without worrying that um, you know, my boss is going to see that I just had a crummy day at work um, if I post it to Facebook. Um, so on a personal level, you need to you need to think about that and how you want to how you want to approach your your personal side of Facebook. On the business side. Uh, Facebook allows uh, businesses to set up pages. It sort of uh, keeps you anonymous from uh, from Facebook, uh, from other you know friends and that sort of thing. So other than uh, other than the fact that you're probably a friend of your business, uh, the, the general public wouldn't necessarily know that Cindy wrote Cindy Stewart. Sorry, Cindy was married, and I was at the wedding. <laughs> so was I. I Um uh, Cindy Stewart uh, isn't that's you know there's, there's, unless she's a friend of, of the Colonial uh, and I know that that she works there. There's no it doesn't necessarily tie you to that to that page. Um, so a page you know for a lot of businesses I think the the, the Facebook page is big here. Yeah, she was for So this is you know. Jeff talked about you know, the changes in advertising and how that affects his business. Facebook is really going to affect you know, Lucidus business um, over over the uh, over the next few years. I think for a lot of again for a lot of businesses, uh, retail um, that aren't doing e-commerce necessarily that just need a, a point of presence on the web. I think uh, Facebook is going to be it's going to be huge, uh, and it's, it's because of that mountain mountain to Mohammed sort of thing. You can put you can put your shingle out in cyberspace with your own website and hope that people can get it, or you could be on a network where there's 350 million people you know uh, are are working and give them an easy way to interact with them. So I think there I think yeah I think for 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 many years to come there's still a place for a corporate website, um, but depending on your business, uh, if you're a small business, a startup, a nonprofit business. It could be that all you need is a, is a nice, uh, a good Facebook page. So it allows you to upload your photo, um, post hours, phone number, um, location. Uh, you can post. Um, so you, you know, Ted is posting as Ted Schwartz Sport, not as Ted McGreer um, in this case. Um, so it's it's the page that's that's making the posts. Um, so Ted had Santa this weekend. He he, he posts about that. All his uh, you know, all his. Uh, fans, uh, 114 fans uh, would have gotten the note that, that Santa was coming. And again, unless you know that Ted McGrath is Ted's, um, you, 
probably don't uh, you don't necessarily associate this person with the brand. But I think I think these things are, are very important for uh, you know, B2C companies, uh, <laughs> personality-driven companies uh, like like your kitchen store. Uh, people associate Dean with that store. Uh, local business really trying to encourage that that local connection. Uh, these sorts of things are, are very important. Is there something you suggest for them to? Um because what I heard earlier, which really makes sense, is don't always plug your product. Mm -hmm. If they, like, what could they do that would be plug your product but still put their name out there? Well, is he, what's he, what is he? Um, what can he do? He can talk about why fit is really important and matters. Because he does, that's part of his brand, right? Okay. He, uh, that's what I think. I don't, mm -hmm. we don't work for them or anything. Okay. But, but here he is plugging it a lot. He sure. could, this friend of his right here, or fan, Betsy, saying she's going to take advantage of this deal for the cash for clunkers uh, shoes and she's talking about all broken in from her three-day breast cancer walks I'd be right on that <laughs> I'd be like wow that's really cool you know those are those are because probably a lot of other people have broken in shoes on them. just from a just one thing it, it shows it's hard but but two there's from a from a follow the money side there's probably a lot of other people who have participated in those things that's a, that's a that's dear to their heart, and they probably have worn out shoes too. So I'd be saying, hey, how can people sign up for that? I'd get right to it. You know, I, re I really wanted Ted to get involved in that, and maybe we can mobilize people to, to, to walk even more next year. And then all of a sudden, she's going to give him a link, and she's going to see that, and then he'll link to it and start talking about it, and all the people will go. You know what to see? That's the kind of thing that's not product, it shows his heart, and it's right in line with what his brand's about. Yeah. Showed adventure involved with the adventure sponsor, uh, you know, photo tours of your, your facility. Um, uh, so you can use, you know, you have photo albums, many albums up here. You could have, you know, again, this may be a little bit too much picture, but you, you could have a, an album of Nike. You could have. Uh, I love that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you could use this, you know, so think about the ways you use your, your website today. You could use your Facebook page in, in many of the same way. I think this starts to be a little bit different model from a, a, a traditional social network and this sort of becomes a your shingle on your, 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 your organization's shingle on Facebook. And it also is a great example of how in that just that breast cancer walk thing. He might not be thinking about that and he's when he sits down to plan his marketing, but his customers are and it's important to them and wow, now let me like jump on that. They can give you ideas. So there a way to um, create, say, a Facebook that links to your website so that you're not creating a Facebook, putting, like, part of that or photos or something, like put it on Facebook and put it on the main website yeah. and put it here and put it there because there's some way of just connecting all of those. So there's just a behind-the-scenes link that when you go to Facebook and you click on that, it's actually taking you to, to your website without people realizing that. You know what I mean? They realize it. They realize it because you'll get. They'll go to the Cheshire Med uh, website. They'll be off. The, they're so used to what Facebook looks like. Yeah. But it's exactly what it would be for. You would say, you know, we're having this event. Just, you, if you want to learn more about it, check it out here. There's a link. The Twitter feed is perfect for that too. Uh, there's a, a you know terms of promotion, <coughs> uh, promotion of Facebook. You know what I mentioned before. Make sure you're you're including things. Um, you know, like your like your fan page you know, on your on your home page or YouTube channel. Uh, there are ways to actually embed a little box like so we go for that. 1025. Okay. okay. Um, there's there's ways to, to to list all your your fans on your on your corporate website. You can put a you can embed a block there uh, to encourage that to happen. There are some things that can uh, Twitter can, it gets a little confusing. I'm, I'm ready for the universe to fold in and up in on itself with some of these interactions, but you can get Twitter to update your Facebook page. Facebook can update your Twitter. Twitter can update your LinkedIn. LinkedIn can update your Twitter. I, I really, I think one of these days it's going to, or the universe is going to fold into <laughs> singularity and it will all disappear when, when the right connection is made there. But uh, there are some ways to do that. There are some geekier ways to, to tie in your, there's some easy ways to tie in your Twitter feed into your website. So you just embed uh, you know, your what's new section could just be your Twitter feed on your website. It's probably unless you, unless you pay someone to make it style right, it's going to look like a, a little widget on the side of your, your web box. 
but that's not that's not necessarily bad either. And then now, for extra credit, you, you, I, you always wondered where the money was coming from at, at Facebook, right? Well, now, have you ever noticed if you have a personal Facebook, uh, how appropriate those ads are on the right to you? More appropriate than, than they seem to be on Google searches for me. And I'm on Facebook more often because I'm checking out what my daughter's photos are, and all of a sudden, she goes to Boston Park, and all of a sudden, there's an ad for BC, um, for, for BC uh, uh, hockey tickets. It's just, so, so if you want extra credit, and you really want to play around with your marketing budget, it's pretty darn easy to create an ad, figure out what the search keys would be for it, and pay per click on it, the way you would if you've had experience with, with, with Google Ads. I was going to suggest to catch up because mm -hmm. because Deb has yep. great experience with, with, yeah, with this. I, I wanted to introduce um, stand up for just for a second and pick Deb Blair's um, mind on this. Deb and I went to high school together, actually, in Peterborough. But um, Deb, you're uh, the director of marketing and a whole bunch of other things. I, 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 I work for a small community bank, and when you work for a small community bank, you do a little of everything, and it's uh -huh. uh, my job changes on a day to day basis. Uh, but I'm sort of the um, bank geek, as they call me. So um, this was right up my alley. And how long ago now? What we, we put up here was, in fact, this is, the way I found out about this was through a social connection a reunion site, uh, through our high school reunion that's coming up. And and um, and then all of a sudden there was a ad on the right. I had said something about banking somewhere. It was an ad on the right about about. From an ad hoc bank, so you've had some actual experience with that. Right, right. We actually do um, Facebook advertising. Uh, you can target exactly what market you want to reach, which has been phenomenal. Uh, geographically? Geographically, demographically, what age group. So you can see here, this is the back to test day. This is the insight. You can see um, you can see what people are doing, but you can see which age group is coming to the site. So Facebook can use all this information you want to advertise to women, to men, that sort of stuff. So they, they know a lot of information. So my, my funny story about our Facebook ad, one of the first ads that we ran was when we launched the page, and it was, what would you do with $100? Well, I said look to my boss, Bill Pierce, I said, OK, Bill, I need a picture of you holding some cash. He says, no, no, no. He says, I was in the last picture. I'm going to use you. So he goes, go lock yourself in your office, take a photo. So I did put together this little ad and this picture of me holding money. Well, my son, my 22-year-old son, was in East Hampton, Mass. And he called me up and goes, Mom, every time I log into Facebook, there's your picture. <laughs> <laughs> every time. So um, I had a dollar for every person who said, hey, I saw your ad on Facebook. You know, it, it really does reach the audience that you wanted to reach. And that was a huge selling point for my boss, was the fact that we could push it Go back to how you started and what you did and what made you want to do this in the first place. Well, being the geek, um, I started, the first page that I started, well, I, I, I did my page, but um, I was trying to figure out how can I get our high school class reunion together as a group. So I started a page, and it snowballed. I mean, it's actually become more uh, an alumni page than a reunion page, which has been kind of fun. Um, and then I was having so much fun with it, I said to my boss, geez, you know, why don't we do something like this? You know, we can get the word out, we can run some specials, we can just get into the community. Because for us, you know, our middle name is community of the Adam Community Bank, and we want to be <coughs> present in the community. We want to show up, we, we want to brand ourselves as being your community bank. We are in the community, you know. There's some examples up there of uh, some community events that we do every year with the Jeffrey Civic Center, and you know it's just been a lot of fun. So did he, he liked the he idea. Resist, did he like it right off the bat? He resisted it a little bit. He reports to our board of directors. Well, they are all oh. up, there, up there in age. Yes, we have a 56 year old gentleman uh, who's on our board of directors. They were our toughest sell. And one of the directors says, well, why do I want to know that Deb's son's band is playing at the Colonial Theater Saturday night? Why do I want to know that? Says, well, it's a little bit different. Uh, you, get, you have a fan base rather than a friend. As a fan, 
we only see basic information. We don't get to dig in as you do as a friend. We don't dig into, you know, what they're doing Saturday night and things like that. So they were a little more open to that because they don't want all our customers to see what all our other customers are up to Saturday night. Or even employees. Right. So, right. so it's it's pretty basic information that you get as a fan. So what you're saying is you set up you did not set up a basic page, you set up a fan page. Right. So it, it's it's really been great. Um, we do a lot with the community. Um, we just ended our, our charity fund giveaway and it became a little bit viral. Um, we st it all started with, uh, when we did our bank renovation, we have a coffee station in house and it's free coffee. However, if you want to donate a dollar, uh, you can nominate your favorite charity and receive all the funds that are in the coffee fund. So we kind of ran with that and did something similar on the web and then the two of them really play off each other and uh, David's house had one one month and I sent a letter with a, a check and we gave them a dollar for every fan that we got and it wasn't a big check but it was enough to get them thinking hey well maybe if we post something on our page and that's exactly what they did they posted something on their page that drove everybody to our page and uh, sure enough uh, we just did our drawing the other day and David's house won for the month of November so I have a larger check to send them this month and it's just a neat way for us to say, you know, that we are not just a bank. But let's let's face it, banks have had a pretty um, pretty harsh reputation this year, in the past year, and we are just trying to show people that we are we're not one of the <coughs> box banks. We are in your community. We're all from the community. You know, we participate in community events, and it's it's just been a great thing. What's been? Have there been any uh, uh, any? Serious problems. We got one negative remark, and it wasn't all that bad. It was just wasn't some customer wasn't thrilled about it the charge that we received. So I met with the CEO and our operations um, SVP, and we put together a nice response. Which you posted. Which we publicly. posted. Yep, immediately. Where is it? Do you have it? It's, it's, it's so pretty far, far back. back. It, yeah. was, it was almost in the beginning. Yeah. Um, and then we also sent him a private note, which is, um, when you click on your fans, you can send them a private note. So, so you we chose to send a private note. And then too. send her a message. Two days later, he decided that, you know, there was something that we posted that he really liked, so he posted something, you know, something positive. It's, so an, opportunity, it's, it's an opportunity to turn critics to evangelists. Right. You know, if you deal with them directly, fairly, what questions? Who's, who's, who's responsible for the content? I mean, there's content on this in front of me here. That, did you place it there? The ads on the right, the thing on the bottom left? The ads, on the, the ads on the right are, is a Facebook thing. So, for instance, that's where our ad would show up. If uh, We're not running an ad at the moment, but that's where it would show up. The grocery giveaway, that's you? That's us, yes. The grocery giveaway is so us. So that's, con that's your controlling the content now? Right. So over here is controlled by that. Everything on the left we're controlled. This here is, what, like the ads inside of Google, this is this okay. Facebook advertising. So Facebook yeah. controls this, the organization controls this, the community controls <coughs> this. Oh, okay. And you monitor it and respond to it. You can add tabs. The, the info is basic info. You had asked about, somebody over here had asked about your company to give info about the company. This is why we're different, how we are. Here's a link to our website, our, our main website, if you want to find out even more. You can put photos up, just like you can for personal. I don't know what notes are. What's that? What's that? Um, well, actually, when we were doing the, um, the fan, charity fan giveaway, we were posting links to the different charities that had been nominated. Oh, I see. So that if someone said, well, geez, you know, what is this uh, date? Why should I vote them? They can click on it. It takes them over to their page. Yeah. No, it's a longer text yeah. format. Yeah. Long, you know, your status update is limited in some kind of 300, 400 characters versus if you wanted like more of a blog post. Um, that, you know. This feature intrigued me. What? How did you just start at any time yeah. you wanted to the bank online thing? Yes. Which is just another way to really promote, but not have it right in their face on the home page. Right. If somebody wants to do it, they can go there. Do you have people signing up online? 
Uh, we do actually. Yeah. Yes. So is it a template that you upload for like the left hand skyscraper? You upload your graphic images to create that skyscraper on the left? Skyscraper. Oh, I'm oh, sorry, sorry, the column that on the left? Yes. So you just it's a template. You just upload it and title it. It's it's pretty simple. Okay. Well, is this a template or did you actually make a JPEG and just put it in? That's a JPEG that yeah. they just created an image and put it in like But a if you go to our if you go to our homepage, there's something similar. Click on that and it will take you to our Facebook page. And if you're not a fan, uh, that button will appear immediately. Come oh, click. Paper click that you have on the right hand side. Um, I'm assuming you control how much money you spend on that there. Yes, you, you set a budget and uh, you can do per click, and there's a couple of other different ways of. Uh, per impression or per. Per impression, which means yeah. how many times a thing gets seen, or per click is a model where you only get you only get charged as much as you click Yeah, we do per click, and it's, it's a very good price. And you bid on it, like for a keyword, just like you would with Google? Yes. You bid on it, yeah. It's pretty, pretty nicely explained. If you just like create an ad, it's pretty easily explained on Facebook. It's worth, it's worth testing. Say, look, I'm willing to spend a couple hundred bucks a month playing with this. See what, see what you get out of it. That's, that's the whole thing, that's that iterate point. Um, I was going to ask one other question before we take a break here. Um, my mind. Oh, time. Who does it? <laughs> you do it. Okay. How much time does it take you? Um, I keep it in the background on my computer all the time, and I check it like once an hour. Um, my, my boss also bought me a handy phone where I can check it on the weekends. And we're uh, getting ready to launch our Twitter page. So we'll be. Uh, I'll be tweeting over the weekends. <laughs> so you figure you take, does it take how much time a day? I probably spend an hour a day, you know, tops. Yeah, I, I, I'm not obsessed about it. But it obviously, well, what do you think about the value of that hour? That you've got 300 fans up there. That's an hour times 300 people. <laughs> you, you should do the metrics any way you want, but seems like a lot, but, but it's it's frontline communicating with your the people who have who have been willing to sign up on the web and say that you're they're your fan. I mean they're they're your they're your your, your dream your dream customer right there. They they publicly said, I love this bank. Um, if, if you're spending an hour a day to, to make sure they're happy and, and that they kill you the angels. And, yeah. and the other thing is even if it's only three hundred fans, it's you're getting smarter about this than your competition if you're in the app and it's not going away. You'll, you'll learn. It's gaining momentum. I mean, we picked up almost 70 fans just in the month of November alone. So it, it's definitely gaining some momentum. How, how long did it take you to build up the uh, We've been going since May. Did you do anything formal about getting the word out on Facebook? We put it on our um, our homepage, you know, our, our main website. Um, I've also done some little takeaway things, and we've done statement stuffers, and we're trying to include the Facebook logo on everything that we do, any advertising that we do. Yeah. <coughs> so it, it's it's starting to pick up. Well, it struck me as for you know for a small organization with not a lot of resources, um, it just struck me as like we were for a bunch of community banks, not yours, and I thought I've got to show them. This. I just have a, a fundamental question. What is the distinction between friend and fan? And do friends get the same information as fans do, or vice versa? Or do you have, does the, the outside world have to choose to do both? Like Ted's page is an example. Right. So, Ted, so when, when Ted posts to when Ted posts to his page, he's posting as his company. Ted, the, the guy who just broke his arm on a mountain bike. Um, so it, it comes through, if, if you fanned it, you um, <clears throat> you only see what he posts as Ted, Ted the business. So does he have to have two pages? He has, it's sort of, it's sort of like the, the personal stuff. He has permission to post from his page or to his page because um, he's an admin of that. So he when, when he makes a post, when he goes to Ted page to, to uh, click status update, it shows up as from Ted's to his board. Um, 
I, I have admin access to the TEDS page now. Show the lucid. If I left you said, yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Well, so it, it, does, it keeps us separate. So someone could be someone could be a fan of Lucidus and not know uh, about my dog getting emergency surgery in Concord. Yeah, but you know, this is what I was talking right. about earlier, that, that, that really fuzzy line between <clears> personal and professional. I think there are a lot of people that would want to know that Ted of Ted Shields yeah. broke his arm. Yeah. Because he has put And he has it, by the way. It's not starting rumors. Oh. Yeah. Well, At least as of yesterday. I'm just, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I mean, where is that distinction from the business point of view and from the fan and or friends point of view? What's, what's the distinction? You have, to, you have to give them permission. Like, go back to Manette. Go back to Manette now for a second. So, I can... I can see that Cynthia Stewart is a fan there, right? She, her person, she, she's <laughs> personal. It's not yeah. me. Yeah. That's weird. Well, yeah. Click on one of the names Click and it'll show you what you see. It, right. yeah. It's very basic information. It'll say she only yeah. shares certain information with everyone. If you know her, add her as a friend. If you click add her as a friend, she's going to get a notification that says one friend request. Oh. Now she's per now it's personal. He wants to see your pictures. He wants to. You know, you have to approve that. So she's there's, a there's fan a, of the bank, but you don't see her personal information. So it's kind of like the lower. Yes. Yeah. Well, in fact, if you look on, or oh, you can't, you have a friend. Uh, blah, 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 blah. If you pull up yours, you're probably a fan of some pages, right? Okay, I'm sure. And all, uh, her other friends, when she posts on the Manadnock, or the people who she has accepted, when she po if she posts something like, I want to win on a Monadnock Community Bank thing, she has 300 friends of her own who will see, Tara just posted on Monadnock Community Bank's fan page. I want, and they'll say, what did she post on that? They'll click, they'll get on there, they'll be like, I want to win too. And you'll build networks that. And that's how, that's how you want the groceries. We'll give away grocery uh, gift cards this month. Can I charge you to do this? Very cool. Um, it is changing. Yeah. It, the the, the uh, contest thing is changing at the beginning of the year. So you're now going to have to go through a third party to run a contest. But the page itself at this point is great. Which is why web developers are involved. Yeah, I have one question. I, I think uh, some of this decision now used to say that groups do it better. Or something that's. Yep. Groups. I, I, I encourage businesses to have pages because you can have fans. Groups are great for informal. Groups uh, is a feature that allows, uh, we, we could start a social marketing and, and team group. And it was sort of, it's a little bit more collaborative in nature versus um, versus your brand talking about your company. So for, for most folks, I think pages were what makes sense. If you were starting a, a political action committee, a, uh, trying to rally your neighbors to vote for the uh, new key school schedule, Things like a group would be appropriate for that. Ted would maybe join a runners, uh, runner enthusiast group. Ted, Ted's shooting sport might might join a runners enthusiast group in in Manadnock. But it's about sort of an issue of shared common um, yeah, desire, and not about his brand in particular. That's not.